Hi, welcome to the Invivo Repair Centre. We're going to be talking about changing the SoundDock Portable PIO board. It's the board that accepts the auxiliary input and the DC input for the charger. Often what happens is the plug gets broken inside there, you yank the lead or something happens and your dock won't play from the aux in and sometimes it won't play from the uh, iPod dock either. But if it does play from the aux in and the iPod dock is charging your iPod, the chances are it could be this board because this board switches the audio over from the front dock tray where your iPod plugs in and the auxiliary in and if that's damaged in some way that switch will not work. So um, also the DC jack gets problems. So to do that you need to order one of these um, items from us. It's called the PIO replacement board for the SoundDock Portable and what we have is an upgraded steel connector and uh, otherwise the same configuration and layout and also on our de design the jack socket is ex exchangeable so if you damage it in the future then this jack, jack socket will snap out of the metal bracket um, mounting and you unplug it here and you can plug a new connector in so save you changing the whole board in the future if you have a problem with the, the jack socket then you can buy the jack socket separately as an accessory, an aftermarket accessory. Uh, the board is tough, it's got a metal housing, a very strong metal housing for the connector, not plastic. It's um, a very rugged design, otherwise functionally it is the same. Okay, So that's the board you need to buy from the Invivo website. So returning back to the dock, turn the dock upside down, stand it on the table and remove the battery, like so. And on top here you have four rubber covers and you can lever these off by just gently pushing against the edge, a screwdriver or in my case a pair of tweezers and peeling off the double sided adhesive to remove the rubber pad. And that will reveal four screws underneath. If um, the, if I pull this off, yeah look it's pulled the paint off on here so the paint covering has come off and it's stuck on the pad now so that if we stick this pad back on it's likely not to stick very well so you may wish to stick some double-sided tape on the pad to make sure it doesn't get drop off and you'll lose it. So four screws revealed, open the dock and under there are four very small screws, oh, sorry three very small screws which we need to take out. One, two and while you're doing this just pinch this together to stop the gubbins falling out. You can see this in the other video too, that's two screws. And three screws. Sometimes they are a little bit tricky to get them to come out so we're going to try lifting them out with some tweezers this time. There we go. So that's the three screws and I'm still holding this together okay, don't undo this. So. Um, what we're going to do now is just loosen these screws slightly, remove, loosen them about two turns each. This will allow the base plate to rise up on the rubber mountings but not drop off completely and I'll show you why in a moment. So turning the dock forward, we're going to now lift out this plastic part and you can see inside there revealed is the docking board here. There's the ribbon cable connections of the docking board to the dock <clears throat> and also we have here the latching mechanism for the tray and there's a spring there and a cam and you can see the cam is installed over that screw boss just there you can see it there it is so I lift it off and you can see there's a peg which goes into the back corner Okay. Now some people on the older docks may have a plastic washer as well. We don't need a plastic washer on this one because our spring has got the little tails sticking out. Uh, but the plastic washer, if you have one, goes on top of this part here. So if I drop that back in there like that, the plastic washer goes there and then the spring goes back on top. Okay. So if you have the plastic washer, it'll work without it. It'll just make a bit of a pinging noise. Uh, that's my phone, my money. So there you have it. Anyway, so these are the parts that come out. Do it on a flat table, you're unlikely to lose them in that case. So now that we've removed those screws, we can go back to the base tray and we can 
undo these screws fully now. All four screws. Again, put them in your graveyard area and then you can lift this plate off. Okay, so there is the plate removed and this is revealed the Bose docking board, uh, the PIO board that we're going to remove, okay. So here you can see locating this there be one or maybe two screws. You may have a screw on the end, it was added later. Uh, this one's only got one screw but if there are two screws obviously remove both screws and if when you're putting it back together obviously you remember to put both screws back in. This is a one screw dot, which is one of the earlier ones. So remove that screw, again remove this one if it's fitted. Then by gently lifting the board up, it'll come unplugged. And there's the old board. You can see the old board with the plastic connector and this convoluted uh, arrangement of contacts which fail. Okay, so we can just put that to one side, put it in the bin. And you can see here, here's, here's the main umbilical cord, I suppose you'd call it, from the power and the audio in to the dock. Now that needs to plug in fully to the receptor socket. So if you just pull it up slightly, you can you can get a little bit of extra cable out. You can see I've just pulled it up maybe 10 millimeters, uh, just under half an inch. And the name of the game is to plug it into this socket here. And it plugs in with a snap, um, but you know, do it carefully, but ensure that it fully it is fully plugged in. If you don't fully plug it in, it won't work. Simple as that. Okay, so uh, the first thing to do is to Drop the dock down. I'm trying to do this so that you can see, and you can see that I'm offering up the board to the connector, and the as you can see, press, and it's fully home. You can see in there. Can you see that, Pete? See the connector is fully engaged into the actual socket there. So those two are fully mated. There's no real gap between the two, and the legs are over the side of the connector. So we're okay now. That's engaged. Make sure it's engaged. It won't work unless that's plugged in. Okay. Um, and then just put the screw back in, or screws if you have two. Oh. Where's it gone? There it is. Sorry, I had a moment to get. There you go. And next thing is to put the plate back on. So drop the plate back on into position. Just put the screws in a few turns each because you still need that movement to enable you to fit the front docking area. So a few screws each, just hold that in position and then turn it again towards you again. This time pull it down slightly and you can see we have our arrangement in there. So slot the connector back through the, uh, the tray adapter. Get hold of your little cam type arrangement and drop it in with the pin towards the back right hand corner. So towards the back in there. Then drop the spring on top there. And this, this boss here on the plastic goes directly into the spring and into the hole. Um, so the name of the game now is holding this in position is to get the tray to slot back in without disturbing the spring and cam arrangement, okay? So um, the best way to do it is to just hold on to this, the connector through the, through the aperture and gently just offer it up into the hole. You can see it's going in, going in, it's going in and it's in, okay? Hold it together with your fingers. You know, you have to be careful not to pull these ribbon cables out too far. That's why we disconnect this, because if these ribbons cable come out, they are, they are actually quite long inside the dock and quite a lot of it will come through and there's a rubber seal there and you can't really very easily push them back. So it's better not to pull them out in the first place. If you need the instruction on how to fit this board from start to finish, there is a separate video on our website which is fitting the connector. So this, isn't, this video is for the rear I.O. board, okay? so. Uh, put your screw three screws back in. And there you go, all three. Nip them up, not too tight, but they'll suddenly feel tight and you'll know you've reached the end of the thread. 
and here we go, and again. And then um, tighten these screws up fully. All four. And then stick your four rubber feet back on. And there you go. Uh, obviously, put your battery back on, and then the way you are again, the dock is working. And you can see there's the, the new connector board mounted in metal uh, with a replaceable uh, audio 3.5 millimeter stereo jack socket and the metal um, power supply receptor, which is the whole thing is quite a bit stronger than the original. So, there you go, that's how you change the PIO board on about a Bose SoundDock portable.